Well, he's an icy. And he's mine. That's the best one we've got so far. Okay. Now, first thing we're going to do is remove the head and guts. I don't think a fresh seafood meal gets too much better than that. G'day guys and welcome to another Sammy Hitzke fishing adventure. Now, as you can see, like most of my videos, we're starting nice and early in the morning. I've subbed out all the light gear for some heavy, heavy gear. I've been saying for a few weeks now, I really want to catch something big and pelagic. I haven't been lucky just yet, so I thought, why not give it another crack? So I'm going to be chucking some poppers and stick baits around this morning, see if I can't raise something big and teethy, hopefully not a shark. And uh, yeah, see that where the day takes us from there to another glorious day. Been very lucky with the weather lately. So with a bit of luck, the fishing gods are also smiling down at us. But uh, I'm going to get this popper in the water and see if we can't get a rise. Well, I've changed tack. I've uh, decided I'll give squidding a go. First cast. First cast, little micro squid. Have a go at that cute little guy. He is going to be a jewfish bait, that guy. They don't get much better than that. There was a follow. Yes, got him. It's a bit better size one. Here's one we can eat. How good is that? Oh, look at the colours on him. It's a cracking day. Beautiful weather. If I can get this guy in without shooting me, that'd be great. Should really be using the net for this, but oh, there we have it. Another sweet little squid. Look at that guy, that's a good eating size, too. You beauty. Put him in the well. That's two. That is two. Oh. I was just going to move back to the patch of sand and this guy come flying out and grabbed it as well. So this is number three. Oh. <laughs> that is three squid in three casts. How good is that? Well, this might end up being a um, bit of a, a squid video. No pelagics this morning. I haven't had a good squid session and good squid cook up in a long time, so I'll happily spend the day and get a good feed of squid. That would make my day. So I'm just targeting these areas of weed. That's what the squid are sitting on. I'm just letting the jig sink down. 
give it a bit of a flick. This is one situation where polarised glasses definitely help. Oh, there we go, got another one. Got another one. How good is that? That was, oh no. He dropped it. Well, I'm gonna net this guy. He wasn't even hooked on the jig properly. He was just holding onto it. That's that. Uh, these are all, they're not the biggest squid. These are gonna be great baits though. Got him. Where are the big dogs at? Oh, he's a, he's a little bit better. So these are all pretty small, obviously still edible at this size. But I think we might, uh, we'll give it one more cast and then we'll move on to the next one, see if we can't find some bigger, bigger fellas. Big ink, little squid. You can go back, mate. You can go back. Right, let's go next one, see if we can't find something a bit bigger. Oh, we got one. Oh, this feels like a proper one. Nice and easy. Oh, a big squid just ate the other squid. Oh, there's two squid on there now. Oh. Oh, this is pretty cool. This is, that's a big one. I think I've got two squid on here. That's a proper one. Oh. This is two squid on one jig. Oh no! Lost the big one, but he's still there. Get off. No! There's a monster. Come on. Got him. I missed him. Look at him just there. Look at him just there.
Go, eat it, eat it. Got him. Oh. No. Oh, that's devastating. That was a monster. Well, at least I got one decent one. I got one, one of the two. That sucks, because that other one was big. Well, just after head cam ran out of battery, this guy came flying in after the jig, and he's probably the best one of the day so far, apart from the kraken that we missed. He's a nice little squiddy. Yee-hoo! I don't even know how many I've caught now, having a ball. Oh, there's one. Come on, eat it. Eat it. Got him. Oh, oh, you're kidding. You're kidding. Oh, I dropped the big one again. Will he come back though? That's, that's two Krakens now. And this guy just won't, won't let go. Ha. Got him. Got him. He's not a bad one. The other one was heaps bigger. Oh. Maybe I'm just not cut out to be an eggy master. Come on. Got him. Got him. Woo! Gonna go really light on this guy because he looked to be a good good one. And I've dropped all the other big ones, and I've, he's only got one, one little um, candle on it. How's this? I'm, dry, I'm reversing up on a squid. Oh, he's a nicey. Oh, I need a shorter rod. And he's mine. That's a good squid. Here we go. That's the best one we got so far. Dropped those other two good good squid, but uh, finally got a decent one on the board. Starting to put together a pretty decent feed. This is uh this is going well. This is kind of like the the backup plan after the pelagics didn't work. And it's only early, so I can still go chase tuna after this and see if there's a few of those around. Maybe even a school mackerel or something, but. 
not going to complain about a feed of squid. Oh, turtle coming right up. This is going to be awesome. Hey, Mr. Turtle. How cool is that? Water's so clear today. Oh. It's actually a good little change. I haven't been squidding in ages. We've got those ones with um, Shauno the other, other week. That's what gave me the idea to, to come out here and actually target them. I ate those ones up and it was delicious, like calamari always is. I'll tell you what, I think I'll be giving the squid a bit more attention this year. Prawns, squid, delicious. You can go back, mate. You can see the second that the sun disappears, it makes it quite difficult to see the weed patches. Also hard to see into the water, so you can't see when you've got the kraken following you up or not. Just want to get one more, one more I think will do me, then it's tuna time. I also wouldn't mind spinning up a school mackerel or two either. I think I've, I've earned one more. I dropped those two good ones. So, I need to make up for that and get, get another one. Definitely got plenty for a feed and some baits there, so happy days in that department. All right, sun's coming back out. Here we go. Got him. There we go. He's not massive, but he will do. That can be our last one. Now it's time for Lechuna. Thanks for coming. There you go. Nice little one to finish off the session. Now, if everyone wondering, the jigs that I'm using, that's a, uh, a Yamashita Search. And the first one, I'll just grab that, was another Yamashita jig, just a bit smaller. Now I'm just fishing them on, um, on my light estuary gear. That's a three to six kilo rod. It's very light, it's more like two to four. Uh, eight pound braid or five pound braid, one of the two, and eight pound leader, so pretty, Pretty light gear, good fun though. You see those big squid, they take off and you really actually have to give them some drag so you don't pull out like I did. But uh, yeah, we've got a nice little feed when I get home. Not as many big ones as I would have liked, but they're all gonna be tasty. Now it's time to see if the old pelagics wanna play with me. We're all sorted in the entrees. Time to see if we can uh, get some main course. Big long tail or some nice school mackerel would be just right. All right, uh, tuna rods rigged. Ready to rock and roll, with a bit of luck, if we can find them. I'm going to stop at the uh, navigational beacons on the way past as well, see if I can't get a school mackerel. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Now I've got a mustard fast hatch clip, I'll show you a bit closer in a second. So I can chop and change between lures as I go from tuna to a, to a, a tuna stick bait to a slug to, to fish these poles. So those clips, they're fast changing so it's it's really handy saves you having to tie knots all the time and um, chew into your leader and all that sort of stuff be cool if we can get a schoolie or something here I smoked the school mackerel up the other day and it was an absolute delight so I thought I better get a couple more and I haven't been able to get one since even a spotty would do. I haven't tried smoking tuna. I reckon that'd be alright. Have to give it a whirl. How's the day though? How's the day? This is going to be an awesome arvo. 
weather like this, to be able to see the tuna from a mile away, to be able to cover ground real quick. Only problem is you'll have no wind at your back to um to get a nice long cast in. Not gonna spend too long on each pole here. Just give it a couple. If it don't get any hits, keep moving. There's a school tuna right here. Oh, big long tails, big long tails. Well, how good some of the snacks people leave in the boat. Dark chocolate coated goji berries. Thanks very much, Shauno. Um, I'm hoping these will be a delicious antioxidant hit. Uh, I shan't be returning them to you. They've got chocolate on them, so they're down the hatch for me. Ooh. Aesthetically, they kind of look like a turd. Look, like, right. ooh, quite nice. Hmm. Cheers, Shauno. Appreciate it, mate. Hmm. Ooh. It's got a big follow up then. Big follow up. He, he was keen. Hopefully you can see it on the camera. One just came flying up after it. Didn't didn't even open his mouth, just come flying up after it like a like a rocket. Oh, oh. had a hit. Oh, there's a few tuna up there. They might need investigating. Oh, a lot of tuna. Yeehaw, that's not what I had in mind. But I caught something with fins. Well, that was a pretty big day and it was warm out there. Perfect weather, but no breeze, so it was stinking hot. And those tuna, I don't know what is going on, but I couldn't even get close to them. They were super, super skittish today. Didn't hook any, missed one, or oh, I missed two school mackerel around the beacons and that was it. Not much going on with the old fin fish today, but did an absolute number on the squid, which is awesome because when I get home, I'm going to show you how to clean them, and then we're going to have a good old fashioned cook up, so stay tuned. Righto legends, back at the house now. Gave the boat a good old wash. There's a fair bit of squid ink everywhere, so uh, I think next time I'll be a bit more careful about where I point the damn things. Uh, but it's time to clean some squid. Now this is a part that some people really freak out about. There's no reason to. It's very simple. It does take a little bit of time. It's a little bit fiddly, but uh, it's very simple and the results are definitely worth it. But this is what we ended up with for the day. Got 13 beautiful squid. Have a go at that guy. He's an absolute ripper, but nothing compared to the size of that kraken that we missed. I reckon he would have been like that big. Oh well, I'll get him next time. But these are all nice eating sores. They're about there. And then these five here, I'll, uh, I'll keep for hole baits. I'll probably um, freeze, or I'll definitely freeze them up hole and I'll probably send them out off the beach somewhere in the hope of a big mulloway will come pick them up or maybe even a big snapper out of the boat. Not sure, but they are perfect size baits. But these guys, I'm gonna clean them up, show you how to do it, and then we're gonna have a bit of a squid cook up. I'm looking forward to it. Now my first big tip is to do this outside. These guys have still got their ink sacks in them and that regardless of how many times they ink in the water when you've got the landing net or in the boat, they, uh, they've always got a reserve. So bust that on your kitchen bench, it's gonna make a really big mess. So do it outside, save yourself the clean up and save yourself getting roused on by your partner. But uh, yeah, let's get to cracking. Okie dokie, now the first thing we're gonna do is remove the head and guts. So slide your thumb in along his backbone there, like that. 
couple of fingers in and then twist and pull and all these guts should come out now you see that ink sack it's already making a mess so it does help to have a hose on hand that way you can keep everything clean including your hands now I don't worry too much about fresh and salt water for these guys um, I feel like squid meat is pretty waterproof so I don't don't really mind um, if you were too concerned just clean them in while you're out in the boat on the salt water and uh, that'll alleviate any of that business now we want to take the skin off so what you want to look for is a little break in the skin you can use your thumbnail just tear it like that and then just peel it all off and once you get under it it'll be a, a whole lot easier like so and you just work your way around now I used to, and I was guilty of this as well, just, just used to shove my thumb under the, the wing there and then peel that whole lot off. But I'll show you why I don't do that anymore. Now you'll notice there's a little bit on the edge of the wings there. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Clean up the underside there. If there is ink on it, I wouldn't worry too much about that either. It, uh, you can definitely eat it. Now, what we're going to do is grab the wings off. Now, not because we're going to throw them away, but because we're going to eat them. Now, I used to be very guilty of throwing these away until someone said, sent me a message like, Sammy, you know these are the best bits. So I tried it, and they weren't joking. That's all delicious meat there, and that crumbs up a treat. So we're going to save that but we need to take them off so the uh, the tube is easier to work with. So just shove your thumb in under it. You'll feel the, the, quite a, a distinct section between the, the tube and the wing, and then it'll just peel right off. Definitely don't throw them out. They are delicious. We've got to grab the quill out. You want to push your finger. This is always the fun part. Slippery little buggers. You want to push your finger in there and turn the tube inside out like so I hope I didn't just splash the camera I did sorry and voila beautiful squid tube there ready to eat now we've got the wings and we've got the tubes the only thing we haven't done anything with is the head now the head you can either keep whole like that and use it for bait. They are awesome bait for big snapper, red emperor, all those sorts of fish will scoff down a big squid head, no worries at all. But for these big guys, I actually like to eat the tentacles. They're really good chewing. Um, especially when you put a bit of salt and pepper on them and uh, cook them on the barbecue and a bit of butter. They are red hot. You don't have to cook them for long, but you uh, give them a quick, quick fry up and they are delicious. So... To attack them, you want to grab the beak out, so you just squeeze in behind there, and that'll come out. And you've got your de-beaked squid head. Just grab your cutting board. Lay it down, and just where the, the tentacles, just where the tentacles meet the body, run a knife over it, like so. And then you can either keep them like that, just connected, or you can cut them into individual little bits. Now we are left with the eyes and heads. You can still use that for bait. That'll still work. Or um, I know people grind it up in, in with their burly and it works really well. There you go, very little waste on the old squid. They're good value, good value. Now that's the way I've always cleaned my squid by hand. Apparently that is the hard way to do it. Now I haven't tried this method, so let me know in the comments if you've tried it and if it works, but apparently you can chuck your squid in a scaler bag and drag them behind the boat while you're on the plane. And apparently it takes all the skin off your, um, off your squid and uh, cleans them right up and then you flip them inside out and it takes all the guts and everything out as well and you're just left with beautiful clean white tubes. Now I haven't tried it, I'll have to try it next time I'm out. So if, you've, if you have tried it and it works, let me know in the comments. But as you can see, they are pretty simple to do by hand, so I wouldn't be too concerned about it either way. Now, I've got to do the rest of this pile, then we can get in the kitchen and cook them up. Righto guys, it is now time for the fun part. It's time to crack a beer and get cooking. And what I might start with is a bit of gas on this oil here. 
Got the walk out again. Cheers to you guys. And I have a big old pile of squid. I've got all the tubes cut into pretty thick sized uh, rings. You can do them nice and thin, but <clears throat> I like squid. I like a bit of uh, a bit of squid meat in there around the, the breadcrumbs. If you go too thin, you just pretty well, feels like you're just eating breadcrumbs. And I've also got the wings here. Now, just remember they are called wings. Don't call them flaps, because if you if you go on too much about eating flaps, that's a that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> so uh, yeah, they, we've got the wings, and we're going to cook those up as well. And also the tentacles. Now I'd love to make you guys sit here and watch me cook the entire batch, but I'm not going to. That would be oh so boring. So what I'm going to do is just cook a couple of each, one set of tentacles, a couple of flaps. Uh, I think I'm funny, no one else does, but I think I am, and a couple of rings. Now, the important stuff. So it's, I'm gonna go the standard panko breadcrumbs, but I, I have my own little twist on it. I've got my flour mix here. Now it's probably about a 50-50 mix of flour, and this here, which is a salt and pepper coating mix. So I've got that all mixed in the plastic bag. I've got my egg wash, and I've also put in there about a little teaspoon of garlic, just to infuse a bit of flavor through there. And then I've just got standard old panko crumbs, nothing flash about that. And then the wok, obviously I've got a bit of rice bran oil, um, and that's heating up pretty, pretty quickly right now. Well, I guess only one more thing to do. I'll do the tentacles last. They're the cool ones. A couple of rings in here. A couple of wings. A couple of rings, a couple of wings. And a tentacle surprise. Give it all a big shake. And when you're pulling out, just a quick check to make sure you've got 100% coverage there. And our tentacles. Give them a good dunk. Make sure you get plenty of coverage on them too, because that egg wash, that, that's your glue. And then from there, Jeez, harder than it looks, try and fish them out. Straight in the panko. The trick with the rings too is make sure they stay open and get panko on the inside. Okay. And then this bad boy. It's gonna look pretty cool once it's all cooked up and crispy. Now I also like to cook, cook the tentacles up, as I was saying before, up on the barbecue. They're really good on the barbecue. Um, cook them up with a bit of salt and pepper, really hot, really quick. And um, I usually chuck them on top of like a salad, or you can even put them on top of your steak or something like that if you're, if you're adventurous, or eat them on their own. They, uh, they do hold their own on the plate. And that is what we're dealing with. Now I reckon that oil should be just about ready to go. I might. Do a little test tentacle. See if we get some. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ow! It spat at me. Turn that down a touch. Now these are going to cook quick. You pretty well just want to look for the colour. Once they turn golden brown, flip them over, and then whoa, spat again. And then once it um, once it's brown on the other side, then chuck it out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tend to these. I'm not gonna be able to hold the camera, but I'll uh, I'll show you once they're off. And last but not least, our calamari rings. Now they look red hot. I'm gonna let them cool down and then I'm gonna get stuck right in. Well there you go legends, serve it with a slice of lemon and a cold beer and I don't think a fresh seafood meal gets too much better than that. I'll tell you what, thank goodness for the squid because I would have been going hungry otherwise. Let's give it a bit of a taste test, I'll go, go a wing first. Not cold. Oh. I probably should have let that cool down for probably about another two, three minutes. Very warm. 
but it's really nice. You can taste the subtle flavors of the garlic and the salt and pepper come through, but it doesn't overpower the squid, so you still get plenty of squiddy flavor. Um, if you need something a bit more, maybe a little bit of tartare sauce or something would go an absolute treat, but I don't personally reckon it needs it. Let's have a little tentacle. Mm. The first time someone told me to try the tentacles, I thought they were full on stitching me up. But I reckon they would have to be probably the tenderest part of the squid. Uh, they are unreal. I would almost go as far as to say there, the, uh, the tentacles are better eating than the, the squid rings and uh, the tube itself. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to upset people, but definitely if you don't already, try the tentacles because it's damn good stuff. Just make sure you don't overcook them. Obviously, a lot thinner, so they don't take as long as to cook. Well, guys, I have a massive pile of squid to get through here. I've got some serious cooking ahead of me. I might need one or two more of these guys to to ease the pain. But look, we're going to get there in the end and have an absolute feast once it's done. I will tell you what, I am looking forward to finally sitting down after a long day getting stuck into this feed because I reckon I earned it. I tried a lot of things, a lot of things didn't work, but the squid, they saved me from the dreaded donut, so all right. But guys, that is all we've got time for this week. Thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you'd like to learn something, make sure you hit that like button, comment below, let me know what's going on. Let me know if you try the tentacles, let me know if you like the squid fishing. Whatever you want, just leave us a comment below and I'll, uh, I'll get back to those as soon as I can. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe because I'm doing new fishing videos every single week. And oh, I seem to be doing a fair bit of cooking as well. So if you like your cooking and eating seafood, make sure you keep tuning in because there's plenty more cook-ups to come as well. Now another exciting bit of news that some of you would already know is I'll be doing some presentations up on the Catch and Cook stage at the National 4x4 and Outdoor Show Fishing and Boating Expo. Now that's on from the 27th to the 29th of March at the Brisbane Showgrounds. So if you haven't got plans, make sure you chuck it in your diary and come say g'day because I'll be doing uh, two presentations a day and I'll be covering some pretty cool topics for our local area. So make sure you come say g'day and check them out. Uh, and if you are going to come, make sure you save yourself some coin. Use my discount code, SAMMY20, and uh, that'll save some coin if you buy online early. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed... Oh, almost forgot. If you want to support the channel, make sure you jump on my website, www.sammyhitskyfishing.com. Grab yourself a hat in the grey or the navy and, uh, yeah, rep some Sammy merch. Well, guys, I hope you had a good week. Hope you caught a few fish. And I'll see you at the exact same time, the exact same place next week, Sunday at 4pm. Have a good one. Cheers.